Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to European Research Days Vietnam. We are on our second session. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, I see a lot of you start, starting to tri uh, trickle in. Uh, perhaps uh, some of you as well are still uh, stuck in traffic um, or uh, still having some responsibilities to take care of. I hope that uh, you join us in a bit. So the European Research Day uh, Vietnam is a flagship initiative of the Euraxis ASEAN and the EU delegation in Vietnam. And really, we would like to thank uh, the EU delegation for their support. And of course, for the EU member states as well, uh, especially those who are represented here. So uh, my name is uh, Dr. Jenny Almako. I am with the Euraxis ASEAN, and I welcome you all to this, uh, but I am not your host. I am just uh, uh, welcoming you <laughs> for a few seconds, but uh, the person who will handle uh, this, uh, this webinar is my colleague, um, who is also handling several countries in ASEAN. I hope, though, that you have a wonderful discussion. If you look um, on your right, you actually have a chat box. Please do use that chat bo box. We want this to be an interactive uh, program uh, where you can ask questions, you know, really take the opportunity um, to ask questions. And I'd like to thank again uh, our panelists, um, Dr. Marco Abiati, Mr. Christoph Pusens, um, Ms. Muyen Thi Kim Nung from the DIA Day, and then of course Marco uh, Dr. Marco Abbiati is from uh, Italy and uh, Christoph Pusens is from Belgium. And of course, we will be joined as well by Mr. Adrian Gutierrez from Spain. So you have like all of these wonderful people really uh, trying to offer you the opportunity to learn about research uh, opportunities uh, in their country. So please do take that. And with that, I'd like to turn you over to my colleague, Dr. Susan Renzo Vazu for the rest of this event. Thank you so much for joining us. Susanna. Thank you so much, Jenny. Yes, Jenny has already uh, introduced you to this uh, wonderful event, European Research Days. It's a series of events which we've been running throughout ASEAN for the past uh, seven years. And we're very happy to be talking to the research community in Vietnam today and of course uh, I know we're being joined by researchers from other countries across Southeast Asia. Now, what we're talking about today are um, funding and collaboration opportunities offered by just some of the members of the European research area. Now, Europe has made a dedicated effort in the past decade or so to create a common space where researchers, scientists, innovators can collaborate with each other without any obstacles, where we have shared research infrastructures, we have a shared research um, funding program, and of course, um, research very much is borderless today. Um, the motto of Europe has always been and will continue to be open to the world. So this is an opportunity for you as researchers outside of Europe to join forces with the research community across the European research area to identify common goals and to find solutions to some of the challenges that we are facing as a global community. So we're joined today by four speakers and they will introduce us to four very exciting research destinations, very exciting research actors that are part of this a large community uh, that is the European research area. And our first speaker um, is representing Italy. So I'd like to introduce you again to Dr. Marco Abbiati, who is the science attaché at the Embassy of Italy in Vietnam. And I know Dr. Abbiati will introduce us to the research landscape in Italy and also give you some information about the opportunities for you to join forces with Italian researchers or to spend some time developing your research career in Italy. Now with this, I'll hand over to Dr. Abbiati. Uh, thank you, Suzanne, for your introduction. And I will try to share my screen. Let me know if everything works okay. Uh, here it is. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can, wonderful. Excellent. 
Good. So, um, yes, mm -hmm. I will uh, introduce you to the Italian research system uh, in order to um, let you know which are the opportunities that Italy can offer for uh, cooperation with the uh, Vietnam and with the Asian region. Uh, especially now that the relationship between the um, European Union and ASEAN, but also between Italy and ASEAN countries and Vietnam, are uh, um, uh, going through a very, very active time with the new agreements that have been signed recently uh, concerning um, cooperation and uh, both in science, in the economy, in many fields. So I will start with a brief introduction to the uh, Italian research system, uh, how it is structured and organized. Then I will uh, give you some uh, information about the um, 20 years of bilateral research project that have been supported between Italy and Vietnam. Uh, a few words about the last bilateral uh, program, 21-23. A few words about uh, Erasmus exchanges of students and scientists uh, and uh, very short conclusions. So, uh, Italian research system. Italy has about 97 universities, uh, 64 of them are public uh, and they include three polytechnic universities in uh, Torino, I can show it here, Torino, up in the north here, Milano, and Bari in the south. These are the three polytechnic uh, universities in Italy and there are 33 private universities. And uh, the university system in Italy is distributed uh, across the whole country from north to south, including the islands. Sardinia has uh, uh, two big universities, one in Sassari, one in Cagliari. Uh, Palermo is one of the major Italian universities, as well as Bari in the south. And in the north, we have Bologna, the oldest university in Europe. Um, the picture on the first slide was a picture of the main uh, building, the oldest building in the University of Bologna that was a bit, was, uh, has been found in, uh, in 1088. So in a few decades, it's going to celebrate 1,000 years of the University of Bologna. Uh, you have Padova University, which is also about 600 years old university and the Pavia University, which is among the oldest that we have. So this university system is spread all around, uh, around the country. And uh, the top Italian university international, in international ranking are the University of Bologna, that I already mentioned, the Polytechnic University in Milano, uh, the University La Sapienza in Rome. In Rome, we have now three universities. La Sapienza is the oldest one and uh, is particularly strong in the field of humanities. University of Padova, this is the second oldest university after Bologna, and the University of Milano. These are the five top ranking universities in terms of uh, uh, QI ranking uh, of universities. And uh, uh, the university, of course, uh, they are both, uh, as I wrote, are both research and uh, teaching universities. We don't have a distinct, we don't distinguish between teaching and research universities. Of course, um, the largest university cover all fields of research and education. Smaller university may be, may be more specialized. La, for instance, University Bocconi, which is one of the top ranking uh, universities in the field of economy, is basically offering uh, um, degrees only in the field of economy. Uh, but the other universities are covering most field, research fields. And um, if you would like to get in touch uh, with the Italian research system uh, of universities, but uh, dealing with 97 universities can be difficult, uh, there are several national inter-university research consortia in Italy. And these consortia are take, bringing together the top uh, universities in specific research fields. For instance, the National Inter-University Research Consortium in uh, Marine Sciences, uh, it includes uh, uh, 35 universities out of 97, uh, all the universities that have major research in the field of marine sciences, which ranges from biology, ecology, geology, oceanography, uh, coastal engineering, economy, uh, conservation, natural heritage. So they cover all fields of marine sciences. And as you can see, there are uh, several consortia like telecommunication technologies, smart cities, which is a very hot topic nowadays uh, in the world and especially in Vietnam, and information technology. I'm just uh, 
now coming back from a meeting on information technology that has been held in, in Hanoi today and tomorrow, which is focusing on the transformation of the society towards the uh, information technology communication uh, methodologies. So if you like to get in touch, uh, you can search for the uh, Inter-University Research Consortia, where you, can, uh, where you have already a selection of the top uh, um, research institution of Italy in the specific fields. Then <clears throat> we have also other uh, major public research organizations, which are national research organizations. They depend and are controlled by the Ministry of Research and University. Uh, and uh, mm, they are uh, natural agencies for science. Uh, the area Science Park in Trieste is particularly well known in uh, Vietnam uh, because many students have been going there to do their PhD, to do their uh, master degree, and also to perform their research. And uh, I am meeting quite regularly people that have been spending uh, um, several uh, uh, months or years uh, in Trieste. And I have to say that I was particularly impressed by the fact that the alumni of Trieste uh, in, uh, it was April, May this year, uh, were uh, collecting money and the tools uh, to fight COVID uh, pandemic for, to send them to the municipality of Trieste. And they were really very, very, uh, kind and very, very, I mean, they show how they are linked still to Italy and to Trieste because they have collected quite a lot of money, quite a lot of equipment that was shipped by, from, by the embassy to Trieste as a contribution to fight against the, the pandemic. And I wish to thank you, Vietnam, for that. Uh, we have the National Research Council, you see here. This is a major institution in Italy. Uh, it uh, includes about six, 7,000 researchers. Uh, and again, it covers most fields of research and it's spread all around the country from north to south. There are institutions and research, in, um, research centers uh, all around the country. We have the Italian Space Agency just uh, a few days ago, a few weeks ago. It was the 4th of December. There was a major event uh, where the Italian Space Agency uh, got uh, in touch with all the Asian countries to present uh, the um, achievements of the Italian uh, research uh, in the field of space. Uh, and uh, I'm can say that to Italy is uh, very advanced in uh, the field of research uh, uh, on space. And um, we have been uh, involved with the European Space Agency, with NASA, with several research uh, um, institutions that are uh, focusing on space. Uh, and uh, um, the supply of uh, equipment that has been shipped <laughs> in the space uh, um, from Italy is quite, quite relevant. Uh, then we have several um, national research institutes, astrophysics, nuclear physics, geology and volcanology. Those institutes are uh, focused on specific topics, as you can see. And they already, especially the, the Institute of Geology, Geophysics and Volcanology is collaborating with uh, Vietnam, with the uh, Ministry of uh, um, Environment for monitoring uh, of geological aspects. Uh, the Institute of Oceanography in Trieste, again, the OGS, uh, is focused on biological, physical, and chemical oceanography. And the Stazione Zoologica, Anton Dorn in Naples, the Stazione Zoologica is the oldest marine station in the world. It has been funded not by Italians, by a German um, scientist, Anton Dorn, and uh, he selected Napoli in the middle of the 19th century to uh, establish the Stazione Zoologica because of the unique environment of the Gulf of Naples and of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, in the last 200 years, things changed a lot <laughs> in the area, but uh, the Stazione Zoologica uh, has been a leading institution for, for uh, about one century, then it was it be declining, but in the last decades, he became again a very uh, an important reference point for marine research uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, we have, as a last uh, uh, compartment of Italian research, we have the uh, national research institutions that are directly related to the ministries. Of course, there is a national health system, 
uh, referring to the Ministry of Health, uh, that is obviously in this uh, year, the last in the 2020, has been super busy with the, dealing with the pandemic, uh, and um, is an institute that is promoting most of our research in the field of uh, um, human health. We have ISPRA, Institute for Environmental Protection and Research, uh, related to the Ministry of Environment, that is in charge for the, all the monitoring of activities along uh, in, on, uh, on the Italian territory, and uh, is um, basically the national uh, environmental agency uh, that is coordinating all the regional agencies of the 20 Italian regions. Uh, particularly interesting for Vietnam is the Council for Agricultural Research and Economics uh, related to the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, it's a very, very active institution, uh, very active also in terms of uh, European projects uh, and applied research, uh, promoting the development of modern agriculture uh, with a special focus on uh, sustainability and organic production. Uh, they already have some cooperation with uh, Vietnam, but this could be for sure improved. And then we have the um, uh, Italian Agency for New Technologies, Energy and Sustainable Economic Development, uh, which is related to the Ministry of Economic Development. Uh, Enea is the name of the agency and um, is um, headquarters is in Rome and most institutions, um, the largest institution are in uh, La Spezia, Rome, uh, Bologna, and uh, Naples, and um, the National Agency for New Technologies was born as the National Energies for Nuclear uh, Energy, but when uh, Italy left their nuclear program, uh, they turned on sustainable uh, and renewable energies, and um, they have uh, several departments uh, focusing on uh, specific technologies uh, in the field of renewable energy, which is quite interesting, I think, for the Vietnam as well, because Vietnam in the last uh, years uh, has been uh, intensively developing uh, um, uh, renewable uh, energies like uh, wind uh, energy and solar energy. Uh, about the collaboration, uh, Italy signed, uh, 20, more than 20 years ago, signed a, an agreement uh, about uh, scientific and technological cooperation uh, between Italy and Vietnam. From the Italian side, it has been signed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, while from the Vietnamese side is the Minister of Science and Technology, who signed the agreement. And uh, every three years, uh, we uh, promote a new call for projects in the framework of the uh, bilateral scientific cooperation. And the project lasts three years. And uh, so since uh, 1998, six uh, executive programs have been already completed. And uh, um, the seventh program uh, should have started on the 1st of January 2020, but due to COVID, it has been postponed to the 1st of January 2021. And uh, um, so we are approaching right now the, the start of the third uh, of the seventh uh, executive program between uh, Italy and Vietnam. Um, to celebrate the 20 years of bilateral research projects uh, that have been uh, performed uh, by many scientists in Italy and Vietnam, um, the uh, uh, executive program, the results of the research carried on in the executive programs uh, have been collected in the volume that has been just published a few days ago <laughs> uh, by Springer on innovation in land, water and energy for Vietnam sustainable development. So there are not all the contributions that have been uh, uh, produced during the 20 years, of course, because it will require a huge volume, but uh, mm, a summary of the major achievement uh, done by Italian and Vietnamese scientists are collected in papers published in this volume. So if you like to be updated about what has been done by Italian and Vietnamese research in the framework of bilateral research projects, you can just uh, access the, the book by Springer, which is available since uh, one week. Uh, and we are going to organize an event to uh, launch the book uh, and probably we will launch it in, in early, uh, early uh, 2021. And uh, concerning the 21-23 bilateral program, 
uh, the topics, as I was saying, uh, evolved in times because science changed a lot uh, since 1998. And the um, key uh, fields of research that are covered by the 2021-23 bilateral program are agricultural food science, biotechnology and medicine, environment and climate change, information and communication technologies, advanced material technology, industry, astrophysics, space and earth observation and technology applied to conservation and restoration of natural and cultural heritage. This last topic is a, a topic that is particularly important for Italy on one side, but also for Vietnam. And um, when I met the, the colleagues from the Ministry of Science and Technology for the signature of the bilateral research program 21-23, um, the colleagues stressed the importance that Vietnam is devoting to the natural and cultural heritage and the fact that in the future, they would like to invest more in the conservation of natural and cultural heritage. I mean, uh, Vietnam is a country that has been developing very, very quickly in the last decades. The economy has been growing very much, the um, um, quality of life improved, and uh, many things progressed very, very quickly. Uh, and now uh, the ministry wants to focus also on the specific issue of natural and cultural heritage, which in some way are uh, at risk when you have such a fast development. And uh, during the, I mean, I didn't move a long time ago to Vietnam, it's just a few months that I'm living here, but um, I attended several meetings, and at every meeting, the stress on environment conservation. Uh, is always there by ministries uh, and by politicians. So this field is going to be very relevant in the, in the near future. Um, in the 21-23 research project, uh, program, uh, we are supporting 21 projects. Uh, and this is a very large number compared to previous uh, research projects. Six projects are based in uh, Ho Chi Minh City universities, four projects are based in Hanoi universities, and one project on cultural heritage is, focused, uh, is uh, based in uh, Hue University. The Italian university involved in the 11 projects are the University of Ancona, of Bologna, of Cosenza, Genova, Milano, Modena Reggio Emilia, Napoli, Parma, Trieste and Venice. Uh, and Politecnico di Milano. I didn't mention it here specifically, but it's also included the Politecnico di Milano. And uh, I'm looking forward because uh, as science attaché at the Italian Embassy, I will be in charge to follow the progress of the work of those 11 projects. Uh, I will be in charge to organize a mid-term evaluation meeting. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to start this activity in collaboration with Vietnamese scientists. Uh, concerning research, we cannot forget about education and um, Italy and Vietnam have a long history of uh, Erasmus changes, uh, both in the KA1 and KA2 actions. Uh, and uh, furthermore, there are several Italian universities that are offering uh, specific uh, grants and uh, facilities to uh, Vietnamese students. Uh, we have two um, institutions in Vietnam that support and promote the exchange of students between uh, Italy and Vietnam, uh, Unitalia, this, which is, that is promoting Italian high education mobility, and the Ital uh, Italian Culture and Language and International Mobility Center, which is based at the University of Hanoi. Uh, concerning the K1 action, uh, in the last uh, five, six years, uh, 38 projects involving Italian universities have been approved and about 200 students have been uh, involved in the bilateral exchange between Italy and Vietnam, which is quite a large number. I know that uh, Vietnam is the largest community of uh, students going abroad to, uh, to study. And what is very nice, uh, in my opinion, is that uh, most of them is coming back to Vietnam after they spent several years uh, abroad to bring back to their own country the experience, the expertise they gain in order to contribute to the development and uh, um, improvement of, the, um, of Vietnam. Um, and the, the student exchange, as I said, are supported by the two, uh, two institutions. Then uh, we have also exchange of um, academic and technical staff of universities. 
and this exchange uh, led to the signature of more than 100 memorandum of understandings for cooperation in education research between Italian universities and Vietnamese universities. Uh, some of those uh, memorandum of understanding are super active and people in promoting a lot of exchange, of course, not in 2020 due to the COVID pandemic, which stopped all this exchange and collaborations. But uh, I mean, people is working hard to prepare for the 2021, hoping that in 2021, we will be able to start again moving across the world. Um, and then we have, as I was mentioned, bilateral student exchange supported by Italian universities that are offering grants or facilities for accommodation or uh, facilities uh, for um, university fee uh, to students uh, from Vietnam. And um, uh, there are uh, several group of students that are moving to Italy to study. I met uh, personally about 40 students at the University of Hanoi that were planning to move to Italy. Uh, in um, December this year, uh, sorry, not in, December, in um, uh, September this year, they were planning to, to move to Italy to study uh, at the Italian University. I think that that's all what I wanted to, 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 to share. I hope this information is useful to you. And basically, <clears throat> what you can say that we have a long history of collaboration between Italy and Vietnam in the field of science, technology and higher education that the collaboration was, has been very productive in depth of scientific publication, technology transfer, and contribution to the development of the economy of both countries. And uh, we uh, are convinced that the student exchange is a key point in developing collaboration and uh, um, that lasts uh, over time. And uh, Italy um, has been uh, active in promoting contacts with the alumni of Italian University that have been working and uh, studying, sorry, in Italy. And uh, now uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is setting up a platform where the alumni that have been studying in Italian University in the past can register in order to be updated about the activities by Italian universities and by the initiatives that the Italian Embassy and the Italian General Consulate in Ho Chi Minh City are, uh, are organizing. That's all. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question or if you need some more inf further information, you can contact me by email at the beginning of the presentation. I think that was my email address. Thank you so much, Dr. Abiati, uh, for this uh, very interesting overview of uh, the Italian research landscape and the many um, existing bilateral collaborations that are already in place between Italian institutions and Vietnamese institutions. Now, we have, of course, um, some questions already from the audience. Um, a lot of our listeners today are interested specifically in the uh, memoranda of understanding that you've mentioned, the ex existing um, agreements between institutions in Vietnam and Italy on student exchange. Now, if someone was interested to establish a similar agreement with their institution, what would your advice be? How should they um, proceed? What would be the first point of contact for them to find information? So, I mean, uh, the first thing is to decide and to define, oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, to define which the topic uh, or the agreement. I mean, if it's just a broad agreement uh, for general collaboration between institutions, you have to select the institution that is of interest to you. But if you want to develop a collaboration on a specific field, the first step is to understand which are the leading Italian institution in the specific field. And for that, uh, I'm available to support uh, the institution that uh, would like to get in touch with Italian universities. And uh, I'm uh, willing to get in touch with them. During the first period of my activities here as Science Attaché, I mean, I didn't specify it. I'm personally <laughs> professor at the University of Bologna. And I've been working there for 20 years as professor. Uh, and uh, I know, I mean, I have contact with uh, many colleagues in Italy across all from, south to, from north to south. So I have my network contacts that I can use, but also I'm in contact with the Ministry of University Research to support in this activity. And uh, uh, during the last uh, the, the, the few months that I've been uh, working here in Hanoi, I've been contacted by several institutions that were organizing workshops or uh, um, meetings. 
asking me if it was possible to uh, invite some Italian uh, speakers to contribute to the conferences. Uh, of course, not in presence, but uh, on, on, online. And um, I managed to get uh, I mean, the contacts and to organize the participation of Italian scientists. And this could be one approach. I mean, if you are interested in a specific field, if you are organizing a workshop, a conference, something in the field that you are interested in, you can contact me and uh, I will try to make a contact between you and the corresponding Italian institution. So you can invite some speakers from Italy and start having a dialogue and see which are the fields of common interest. Thank you so much. That's a, a very concrete offer there for our participants today. You can contact Dr. Apiati and he will assist you in identifying potential collaborators and partners um, in Italy. Now, um, a similar question regarding funding opportunities. So we'll have quite a few um, attendees today who are interested in either funding for their um, education, for maybe for a master's or a PhD, but maybe also some of the colleagues that are interested in finding um, research funding to do postdoctoral research in Italy. Would you also have some information where this type of um, information can be accessed? So I already mentioned the two agencies that are dealing with the uh, Italian research uh, system. These are Uni, uh, Unitalia, which is based uh, at the Italian embassy in Hanoi and the uh, Italian Cultural Language Center, which is based uh, at uh, the University of uh, Hanoi. There are, these are the two um, reference institutions for exchange of students. Uh, concerning uh, uh, PhD, uh, in Italy, uh, the system of the PhDs works in a way that there is a national call for PhD positions, uh, which is published uh, by the Italian Ministry of Research and Education uh, uh some time in uh, april may and uh, there are advertised all the phd positions available in italy and uh, the phd positions are open to foreign students so if you like to have a phd um, experience in italy you can apply and uh, submit your cv uh, follow the process of application, which can differ from university to university, but basically you have to submit a CV. And sometimes they also ask to submit a small project proposal to understand which are the field of interest of the candidates. And then uh, there's a process of selection going on. Uh, I just recently, I was talking to a with a colleague from the University of Torino and uh, about, I mean, the fact that uh, I'm a science attaché in Hanoi, and he told me that the Vietnamese uh, student entered the PhD at the University of Torino last year. <laughs> so you have just to apply and, uh, and see if you can, uh, can go through the process of selection. Uh, for postdoc, uh, uh, there are also uh, calls published uh, nationally, but uh, uh, for postdoc, I think that uh, is easier if you are in touch with somebody that is uh, uh, doing research in your field of interest. I mean, if you want to do a postdoc uh, in ecology, you have to get in touch with some ecologists that are working in the field which is close or related to what you are doing and uh, uh, what this, the candidate is doing and then get in touch start some interaction and then ask uh, if there is any opportunity for a postdoc in italy we have two types of postdoc one is a junior postdoc which is called assegno di ricerca uh, which is uh, annual or biannual and then we have also the temporary research position which is a tenure track basically which lasts for three years so there are two options for the postdoc in Italy. Mm. Thank you so much. And maybe at this point, I just mention again the EU funded postdoc opportunities under the Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions. And Italy, I think, is one of the main host countries for successful uh, applicants. And we've just heard last Friday from a Vietnamese researcher um, who is a fellow under this particular scheme. And I'm sure also Dr. Abiati and his colleagues and his team across Italy will provide information on potential hosts if someone is interested in uh, applying 
for an individual fellowship under the Marie Curie actions with an institution in Italy. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Marie Curie is a really very important tool uh, in order to exchange students with the uh, with, uh, with Europe, and I have to say, I'm quite proud of the fact that the University of Bologna uh, is the most active university in Europe in terms of uh, incoming and outgoing students in the framework of the Erasmus project. So we are uh, the, the first uh, university in terms of number of students that leave the University of Bologna to study abroad for one year or come to the University of Bologna to study in the framework of the Erasmus. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Abiati. And who can blame them? Because Italy, of course, is a beautiful country and with wonderful food. So everybody yeah. uh, can get really excited. So thank you very much, Dr. Abiati. We will thank share uh, Dr. Thank Abiati's presentation slides after this webinar, and they will contain his contact details. So for those of you that are interested in further exploring what Italy has on offer for you, then please do get in touch with him. Now, this is now um, my opportunity to hand over to our next speaker, and we're just moving as slightly to the, to the right, I think. We're moving to Germany. And our next speaker is representing the German Academic Exchange Service, the DAAD, which is a little bit of a, a misnomer because the DAD does a lot more than just uh, exchanges. They are also um, the agency that is responsible for promoting research opportunities in Germany. And our speaker is Ms. Nung, who's a scholarship officer from the DAD office in Hanoi. And I'd like to invite her to please share her presentation now. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. Now I end my first time with Zoom, so I try to I think yeah time and uh, okay um uh, also planning and planning Um, okay, so I, I want to check if uh, you can see me and you can hear me. Yes, it's perfect. Okay, but uh, in my, um, from my um, screenshot, uh, screen, I only see my, um, the presentation. Wait a moment, I try to do it. Okay, uh, once again, um, my name is Nyu, and uh, first I want to thank uh, RSS to invite us to organize, uh, organize this uh, event for us. And um, I prefer to do my presentation in Vietnamese, but uh, my presentation is uh, in English, so uh, if you don't speak Vietnamese, you can um, still follow what I talk about. <laughs> Is that okay for everybody? I think that's fine. Just proceed, please. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Nhung and uh, I'm in charge of um, the DAD Scholarship for Vietnam. And uh, my presentation has three parts. The first one, I will tell you shortly about DAD. And then I will uh, make a uh, brief introduction into German research uh, landscape. And um, the third part, I will tell you about some uh, funding organization, inclusive uh, DAD and uh, DAD uh, scholarship for PhD candidate and researcher uh, lecture at the university. Um, if you have questions, so I may answer um, at the end of my presentation. Okay, now I uh, switch to Vietnamese. <laughs> okay, um, the RRD is a la Beta Kutu Deutsche Akademische Austausdienst, hay còn gọi là Cơ quan Trao đổi Hàn Nam Đức. DAD là tổ chức uh, phi lợi nhuận tuy nhiên là các cái nguồn tiền mà DAD hoạt động là của 
chính phủ Đức ví dụ như Bộ Ngoại giao, Bộ uh, Hợp tác Kinh tế và Phát triển uh, hay là Bộ Giáo dục hoặc là của Liên minh châu Âu hoặc là của những nguồn tiền khác và uh, DAD là điện đại diện cho các trường đại học của Đức trụ sở chính của DAD là nằm ở Tây Đức, thành phố Bonn À, và mỗi một điểm xanh ở trên đây các bạn nhìn thấy là những cái trường đại học mà DAD đại diện cho à, và hiện DAD vẫn đang là cái tổ chức um, lớn nhất về uh, hỗ trợ tài trợ và trao học bổng trên thế giới và DAD có rất là nhiều các cái chương trình học bổng uh, khác nhau tuy nhiên là học bổng của DAD thì chỉ có bắt đầu cho cấp sau đại học tức là bachelor là sẽ không có học bổng Um, DAD thì có uh, 15, 16 cái văn phòng đại diện trên thế giới thì trong đó thì chúng ta có một văn phòng đại diện ở Việt Nam đặt ở trong trung tâm Đức trường đại học Bách Khoa từ tháng 10 năm 2003 và chúng tôi cũng có một cái văn phòng đại diện nữa ở um, trong thành phố Hồ Chí Minh tên là Information Center của Chúng City và đặt trong tòa nhà rất là hiện đại ở uh, thành phố Hồ Chí Minh là ngôi nhà Đức um, Phần 2 Chúng ta đã đến phần 2, tôi muốn giới thiệu với các bạn về những cái đơn vị nghiên cứu của Đức. Thì cái đơn vị đầu tiên thì kể đến là các cái viện nghiên cứu trong các trường đại học. Cái thứ hai là những cái viện nghiên cứu không thuộc trường đại học. Và cái thứ ba nữa là những cái đơn vị nghiên cứu trong lĩnh vực công nghiệp. Và slide tiếp theo thì tôi giới thiệu với các bạn về những cái đơn vị mà uh, tài trợ uh, nghiên cứu hoặc là cấp học bổng uh, đơn vị đầu tiên là những cái đơn vị đơn thuần chỉ là cấp kinh phí hoặc là cấp học bổng thôi trong đấy có thể kể đến ba đơn vị lớn là DAAD, uh, DFG tức là German Research um, Foundation và đơn vị thứ ba là Alexander von Humboldt Alexander Foundation và có một đơn vị tiếp theo là những, uh, những cái cái viện những cái hiệp hội mà họ vừa nghiên cứu nhưng cũng có cái cấp học bổng ở đây là bốn cái đơn vị lớn nhất của đức là viện uh, Fraunhofer, viện Leibniz, viện Max Planck và viện uh, hiệp hội Helmholtz bên cạnh đó thì uh, đức còn có những cái um, uh, đơn vị nghiên cứu và cấp học bổng tư nhân hoặc là của nhà nước nữa ví dụ như có thể kể tên chỉ là ví dụ thôi ạ à, quỹ của Volkswagen hay là quỹ của Fritz Thyssen hoặc là hội Stuttgart và slide tiếp theo thì tôi muốn giới thiệu với các bạn về các cái uh, thành phần cấu tạo nên cái môi trường nghiên cứu của Đức thì ở đây chúng ta sẽ nhìn thấy hàng dọc hai cột một bên là public funding một bên là private funding thì um, đó là những cái, cái cái điểm mà để các bạn nhìn thấy và hàng cột trên là applied research và cột dưới là basic research đó là chia làm bốn ô như vậy đúng không ạ À, thì à, lúc nãy tôi có nói là các đơn vị nghiên cứu thuộc trường đại học đúng không? thì đây sẽ là ở những cái viện này thì họ sẽ nghiên cứu vào hai hướng basic research và applied research tức là nghiên cứu cơ bản và nghiên cứu uh, mang tính ứng dụng và nguồn tiền để những cái uh, đơn vị này hoạt động là từ quỹ công từ ngân sách công và cái thành phần thứ hai đó là non university research one thì là tôi chia ra như vậy để các bạn rõ thì à, kể nhóm này có thể kể tới bốn cái tổ chức là Max Planck Society tổ chức Helmholtz Association Leibniz Association Fraunhofer Gesellschaft thì ở uh, Max Planck uh, Society thì các bạn sẽ thấy là Max Planck sẽ chỉ thực hiện các nghiên cứu cơ bản và ngân sách để phục vụ nghiên cứu đó là ngân sách công à, và cái tổ chức Helmholtz uh, thì uh, ngân sách là ngân sách công nhưng mà họ sẽ thực hiện cả nghiên cứu cơ bản và cả nghiên cứu ứng dụng à, tiếp theo là Leibniz Association thì các bạn sẽ nhìn thấy là họ dùng cả quỹ công và quỹ tư để thực hiện nghiên 
cứu và nghiên cứu chủ yếu là nghiên cứu um, cơ bản. À, giống như là Leibniz thì quỹ hoạt động của Fraunhofer là của quỹ công và quỹ tư. Tuy nhiên Fraunhofer chỉ thực hiện những cái nghiên cứu mà thì ứng dụng. Và đấy là cái bốn tổ chức nghiên cứu rất rất lớn của Đức. Có thể nói là bốn ông lớn của uh, Đức. Thì uh, đầu tiên thì tôi muốn giới thiệu với các bạn về tổ chức Leibniz. Phương châm hoạt động của Leibniz thì là Science for the Benefit and Good of Humanity tức là uh, khoa học vụ cho cái lợi ích và niềm hạnh phúc của nhân loại. Và hiện giờ thì uh, Leibniz có 96 cái đơn vị um, uh, nghiên cứu khác nhau và cái um, uh, họ nghiên cứu các vấn đề liên quan đến xã hội, uh, kinh tế và hệ sinh thái. Uh, cái lĩnh vực nghiên cứu là khoa học tự nhiên, kỹ thuật, khoa học môi trường, kinh tế, uh, uh, vũ trụ và khoa học xã hội và nhân văn. Ngoài ra thì họ có um, mảng về um, chuyển giao các kiến thức về chính trị, khoa học, uh, kinh tế và xã hội. Um, cái ông lớn nữa trong cái môi trường nghiên cứu của Đức đó là Max Planck Society, tiếng Đức là Max Planck Institute. Thì Max Planck um, được thành lập năm 1948 và hiện giờ có 86 cái, cái vượng, viện nghiên cứu lớn nhỏ. Uh, lĩnh vực nghiên cứu chủ yếu là uh, như lúc nãy tôi nói là nghiên cứu uh, cơ bản trong tất cả các lĩnh vực khoa học và nó uh, hỗ trợ các cái ý tưởng sáng tạo và đơn vị tiếp theo là Helmholtz uh, Association thì uh, được thành lập năm 1995 và uh, cái phương châm hoạt động chính là shaping the future tức là tạo dựng nhìn tương lai uh, Helmholtz có 19 cái trung tâm nghiên cứu và uh, Helmholtz thì uh, nghiên cứu chủ yếu để giải quyết những cái vấn đề um, những cái thách thức lớn của xã hội của khoa học và của um, industry công nghiệp công nghệ công nghiệp ừ. cái lĩnh vực nghiên cứu là khoa tự nhiên và sinh và y học ngoài ra thì còn nghiên cứu về cái cơ sở hạ tầng và những cái um, máy móc siêu to khổng lồ à nhạ. những máy móc hạng nặng nhá và cái tổ chức thứ tư tôi muốn giới thiệu với các bạn đó là Fraun Hofgesellschaft thì uh, Fraunhofer là được là thành lập năm 1949 hiện thì có khoảng 72 uh, cái viện nghiên cứu khác nhau uh, cái phương châm uh, của Fraunhofer là nghiên cứu um, vì cái uh, vì uh, uh, dành cho tương lai nhá và cái uh, nghiên cứu của Fraunhofer là chủ yếu là tập trung vào định uh, hướng uh, ứng dụng cho ngành công nghiệp và cho cho xã hội à, họ hoạt động mạnh trong cái lĩnh vực uh, sức khỏe uh, an ninh uh, truyền thông giao thông năng lượng và môi trường đấy là uh, gọi là the big four non university research institution from Germany um, cái um, slide tiếp theo thì tôi muốn giới thiệu với các bạn là uh, uh, tiếp cái đơn vị gọi là non university research slide uh, two <cười> đó là um, lender institutions hay còn gọi là state institutions tiếp theo là federal institutions uh, và academies thì các bạn nhìn thấy ở đây là Lender Institution là nghiên cứu thiên về khoa học ứng dụng còn Federal, Federal Institutions hoặc là Academies thì uh, nghiên cứu về khoa học cơ bản và nguồn kinh phí để ba đơn vị này nó hoạt động là từ uh, ngân sách công uh, Lấy ví dụ về uh, Non-University Research 2 thì chúng ta um, sẽ nhìn thấy um, có Uh, Federal Research Institution thì có khoảng 37 uh, đơn vị uh, nghiên cứu như vậy thì uh, BAM là 
äh, wird der Kultur Bundesanstalt für Materialforschung und Prüfung, tức là äh, Phòng Liên bang về Nghiên cứu và Thử nghiệm các vật liệu hoặc là Bundesamt für Strahlenschutz, tức là phòng uh, văn phòng liên bang về bảo vệ uh, bức xạ. Đấy chỉ là một vài cái ví dụ thôi. Um, còn cái từ Robert uh, Koch Institute thì chúng ta đã nghe rất là thường xuyên đúng không ạ? Tại Covid nên là uh, bỗng nhiên cả thế giới biết thêm đến một viện gọi là viện Robert Koch Institute, tức là viện chăm sóc uh, sức khỏe cộng đồng của, của Đức và nó xếp trong cái Linder Research Institution và theo đánh à, thống kê thì có khoảng độ 163 cái viện như vậy Đó, thì còn à, ngoài ra thì khoa học xã hội cũng chiếm một cái à, vai trò rất là quan trọng và ở Đức thì có rất nhiều những cái à, gọi là viện hàn lâm à, nghiên cứu về khoa học xã hội và nhân văn thì ví dụ như là Union để nói trên Akademien để Wissenschaften vân vân Yeah. Um, một yếu tố nữa đó là gọi là research infra infrastructures thì là um, ở đây thì là nó là nghiên cứu basic này nguồn ngân sách hoạt động cũng là quỹ công vậy thì research infrastructure cụ thể nó là gì um, chính là cái uh, cơ sở hạ tầng để nghiên cứu về biến uh, đổi khí hậu À, là cái nền tảng cho các nhà khoa học uh, khoa học xã hội khoa học và văn hóa và nhân văn hoặc là uh, là cái uh, network của cái khoa học về sớm hoặc uh, những cái nghiên cứu con tàu nghiên cứu uh, research infrastructure này thì đã giúp đưa ra quyết uh, uh, quyết sách một cách nhất quán cho các cái dự án um, lớn và lên lộ trình cho những cái dự án đó bằng cách là lên kế hoạch an toàn và hỗ trợ hay tài trợ mục đích của um, research infrastructure là cung cấp uh, các phương tiện hữu hiệu cho nghiên cứu uh, mũi nhọn của đức rồi và tiếp theo uh, một phần cũng không thể thiếu được của uh, trong môi trường nghiên cứu của đức đó là cái gọi là industrial resource thì um, sẽ cũng các cái công ty của Đức uh, thì nó cũng sẽ uh, có những cái phòng ban để nghiên cứu và tất nhiên nguồn kinh phí để hoạt động là nguồn kinh phí tư và những cái nghiên cứu của họ là chủ yếu là về nghiên cứu ứng dụng và các bạn nhìn thấy nó bên trên và bên tay phải và uh, tiếp theo thì tôi sẽ kể tên một vài những cái chính cái um, gọi là thương hiệu thay uh, thúc đẩy đổi mới sáng tạo của Đức và các bạn uh, sẽ thấy đây là 9 cái thương hiệu lọt vào tốt tốt 20 cái thương hiệu mà uh, thúc đẩy sáng tạo của châu Âu đó là Siemens đó là Continental đó là Bosch đó là Bayer Daimler BMW hay là uh, VW hoặc những ai mà À, quan tâm đến công nghệ thông tin thì sẽ biết đến cái hãng lại gọi là SAP SAP thì đó là những cái uh, thông tin gọi là cưỡng ngựa xem hoa về môi trường nghiên cứu học thuật của của, của Đức à, giờ tôi sẽ chuyển sang phần 3 đó là giới thiệu với các bạn về những cái um, tổ chức những cái quỹ uh, cấp um, kinh phí để phục vụ nghiên cứu của Đức cái slide đầu tiên về cái cái, cái cái tổ chức đầu tiên mà chúng tôi muốn giới thiệu đó là GFG uh, Deutsche Forschung Gemeinschaft hay tiếng Anh gọi là um, German um, Research Foundation thì um, cái mục đích của cái GFG này là nó nhằm thúc đẩy uh, um, khoa học thúc đẩy sự phát triển của khoa học và cái tiêu chí hoạt động là dựa trên tiêu chí từ dưới lên trên à, tuy nhiên GFG thì chỉ à, à, tài trợ những cái à, dự án của Đức thôi và à, tài trợ liên quan đến các dự án mang tính cạnh tranh à, trong cái kinh phí của mình thì khoảng hơn 30% 
là sẽ dành cho um, individual funding và DFG thì được thành lập từ rất sớm từ 1920 sớm hơn cả DAD à. Ở tất cả những cái thông tin về DFG thì các bạn có thể xem được trên trang là dfg.de À, và tổ chức tiếp theo chính là Alexander von Humboldt Alexander von Humboldt Foundation thì um, tổ chức này là tạo ra những cái mối liên hệ xuất sắc là sao tức là sẽ hỗ trợ những cái hợp tác mang tính khoa học giữa các nhà khoa học của giữa những các nhà nghiên cứu của Đức và quốc tế um, Alexander von Humboldt thì tài trợ và tạo ra những cái mối uh, quan hệ một cái network rất là xuất sắc và cái nền tảng của của Alexander von Humboldt đó là lấy con người làm trọng tâm được thành lập năm 1953 và cho tới năm 2018 là đã có 55 giải Nobel về những cái funding opportunities của Humboldt thì các bạn có thể xem trên trang của Humboldt Minute Foundation minus foundation de và uh, sau đây thì uh, các bạn sẽ được chia sẻ cái slide mà tôi đang trình bày nên là các bạn chắc cũng không cần phải viết um, và đơn vị cuối cùng tất nhiên là DAD uh, lúc trước thì tôi có nói về DAD rồi bây giờ tôi sẽ nói lại ngắn gọn thôi là uh, là viết tắt của từ Deutsche Akademische Ausstellung tức là German Academic Exchange Service thì là để exchange được thì chúng tôi sẽ cần có những cái phương tiện đúng không ạ và một trong những phương tiện đấy là uh, individual funding thì uh, tôi giới thiệu với các bạn các cái chương trình uh, học bổng dành cho giảng viên của các trường đại học hoặc là các um, nhà khoa học của các viện nghiên cứu cái chương trình đầu tiên gọi là Reinvitation Accounts for DAD Former Scholarship Holders Tức là bạn được học bổng của DAD rồi, bạn học xong rồi, bạn về Việt Nam, bạn muốn đi lại nghiên cứu 2 đến 3 tháng rồi được Thì bạn có thể áp lại cái chương trình này Chương trình tiếp theo là chương trình Research Days Nếu bạn chưa học có học bổng của DAD nhưng bạn đã có bằng tiến sĩ Bạn à, muốn làm nghiên cứu 2-3 tháng tại Đức thì bạn có thể nghĩ đến chương trình này À, ngoài ra thì còn có những cái, có những cái um, chương trình của chương trình gọi là DLR DAD Research Fellowship Program tức là nó dành cho những cái lĩnh vực là hàng không vũ trụ giao thông và năng lượng tức là nếu mà bạn là làm bên khoa học xã hội hoặc là bên văn hóa thì thì không xin được những chương trình này Tuy nhiên nếu mà bạn đi làm định đi làm nghiên cứu sinh tức là PhD uh, candidate thì bạn có thể nghĩ đến nhiều cái chương trình học bổng của DAD hơn. Cái chương trình đầu tiên chính là chương trình uh, Development Related Postgraduate Course hay còn biết tắt là EPOS. Chương trình thứ hai gọi là GSSP Graduate School Scholarship Program và lại một lần nữa nhìn thấy DLR DAD Scholarship Program ba chương trình đầu tiên này các bạn nhìn thấy đó là chương trình không phải thường niên nếu trong trường hợp năm nay bạn nhìn thấy khóa học và bạn muốn apply nhưng mà hạn đã hết rồi thì năm sau bạn hãy nhớ xem lại xem cái khóa của cái um, chương trình mà bạn muốn theo học nó còn hoạt động hay không nếu còn thì các bạn cứ thế chuẩn bị hồ sơ và và là apply thôi còn uh, tiếp theo cái chương trình mà tôi muốn giới thiệu đó là chương trình resource grants DAD Research Grants thì sẽ có ba chương trình khác nhau một chương trình gọi là One Year Grants chương trình thứ hai gọi là Be Nationally Supervised Doctoral Degrees và chương trình thứ ba là Doctoral Programs in Germany à, ba cái chương trình sao đỏ này tôi đánh dấu tức là nó hàng năm vẫn luôn luôn có và nó có dành cho tất cả các lĩnh vực chứ không phải bị ở giới giới hạn um, chuyên ngành chỉ là giao thông vũ trụ hay là năng lượng mà cho tất cả các uh, chuyên ngành và nó có một điểm chung nữa là nó sẽ cạnh tranh trong Việt Nam và hạn của nó sẽ thường là uh, ở giữa 
khoảng giữa tháng 10 hàng năm. À, với One Year Grants thì bạn có thể xin được à, học bổng từ 7 đến tối đa 12 tháng. Chương trình E-Nationally Supervised Doctoral Degrees thì bạn có thể xin học bổng từ 1 đến 2 năm. Nhưng cái điều kiện của này thêm thêm nữa là các bạn sẽ cần à, phải là sinh viên PhD tại Việt Nam, sinh viên nghiên cứu sinh tại Việt Nam thì bạn mới xin được. Và cái phần mà tôi thấy vô cùng hấp dẫn đó là chương trình Doctoral Focus in Germany. Với cái chương trình này bạn sẽ thực hiện hoàn chỉnh một đề cương nghiên cứu uh, tại Đức học nếu bạn được học bổng thì um, học bổng của bạn sẽ là 3 đến tối đa 4 năm. Vâng, điều kiện như thế nào thì thực ra là nó sẽ um, vô cùng nhưng mà quan trọng nhất là bạn phải có đề cương nghiên cứu và hướng nghiên cứu rồi là thầy nhận đỡ đầu cho đến đề cương nghiên cứu đấy. Um, và chi tiết hơn nữa thì các bạn sẽ lên có thể lên trang web của DAD Việt Nam để tìm hiểu ở trên này sẽ có các chương trình học bổng sẽ dẫn, như tôi đã nói là không có học bổng cho uh, cấp đại học mà chỉ có sau đại học thôi tức là sẽ có cho master và PhD thì các bạn có thể xem trên này và các bạn có thể tham khảo các câu hỏi thường gặp và sau cùng các bạn có thể lên trang uh, scholarship database thì ở, ở đây thì bạn thấy có tiếng Việt nhưng khi bạn vào scholarship database thì bạn sẽ chỉ nhìn thấy tiếng uh, Đức, à, hoặc là tiếng Anh vậy ạ. Uhm. Và đây là cái giao diện khi bạn vào cái fundingguide.de chính là data uh, scholarship database của DAD. Thì bạn có thể chọn là uh, keywords or program title, program for graduate, undergraduate hay là Doctoral Candidate, Country of Origin. Nếu bạn tới từ Việt Nam thì ghi Việt Nam, nếu bạn tới từ Lào thì ghi là Lào. Yeah. Nếu mà bạn chỉ tìm cái học bổng của um, DAD không thôi thì bạn sẽ tích vào DAD Funding Program Only. Đó. À, nếu như mà bạn đã quan tâm chương trình Doctoral Program in Germany thì bạn click vào bạn sẽ ra thấy là um, Tại đây bạn sẽ nhìn được thấy rất nhiều thông tin. Cái quan trọng nhất đầu tiên là Overview. Sau đó sẽ là Application Requirements. Tiếp theo là Application Procedure, Contract and Consulting. Và Submitting an Application. Yeah. Nếu như trong trường hợp mà bạn đọc kỹ cái này rồi mà bạn còn những cái câu hỏi gì khác thì các bạn có thể liên hệ với lại à, tôi qua địa chỉ email của Facebook hay là gì đó um, tất cả những cái thông tin về uh, research in Germany các bạn có thể xem trên trang web này research minus in minus Germany de về um, funding opportunities thì các bạn có thể xem trên trang funding de hoặc là xem arasset de garret org vân vân yeah. Uhm. Và trong trường hợp các bạn còn câu hỏi nào nữa thì các bạn có thể liên hệ với lại là uh, tôi qua điện thoại, qua email Email của tôi là nhung.vn.org Hoặc là các bạn có thể gửi một tin nhắn qua Facebook Và xin cảm ơn vì các bạn đã theo dõi chương trình Okay. Thank you so much, No. Yes, uh, I try to come back to time. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for this um, information. Now, I've been a DAD representative myself, so I know how incredible the offers are from the DAD and other institutions in Germany uh, for yeah. funding at all levels, uh, undergraduate, masters, PhD, and postgraduate level, and also the very many opportunities uh, for collaboration. And I think um, just looking at some of the questions that we've received today, of course, our participants are interested in exploring these funding opportunities that you have um, introduced. 
And I think the key website to remember is really funding-guide.de, funding-guide.de, where you can kind of do your own search and find, find out more about the um, opportunities that uh, we have just heard about. Um, yeah. Let me just see whether there's any more specific questions that we can, uh, we can discuss. Yes. So uh, again, the question is, you know, our cooperation opportunities between universities, that seems to be one of the key concerns of our audience um, tonight. Would you also, just like your, um, your colleague from Italy, have some advice if someone is interested in exploring some form of cooperation agreement between their institution in Vietnam and a partner institution in Germany? What should be the key steps that they should take? Um, yes, and to, to, to make a cooperation, they, um, for example, Vietnamese universities, they should find a um, suitable partner from Germany, a German uh, university. So um, the, the, two, um, the two universities um, meet each other and discuss together and they make a plan and then the German uh, university um, uh, write a project and uh, they can apply for uh, uh, institutional funding from DAD, for example. Um, um, I'm in charge of um, DAD scholarship program, that means uh, just only individual um, funding program only. And my, my, uh, my boss, my chef, Mr. Hasebeer, and he is in charge of institutional funding. If, uh, if you want to get more information, you can come to the university and uh, give you uh, the, uh, the, the university's information, what kinds of funding we have, and uh, maybe uh, when we organize uh, some university uh, networking, so we can invite your unit university so we will give you the chance to meet the um, German university here but this year we cannot do it or uh, maybe next year not because uh, uh, due to the COVID-19 but if you have any um, specific questions so you can mail me or um, my, my, my boss so we can give you more information about that. Thank you so much, No, that's wonderful. And uh, you're very lucky the DAD has so-called ICs, information centers um, across yes. the world really. And you have even the regional head office uh, in Vietnam. So yeah. your colleagues are available for further information. And just really to summarize, there is really a whole host of opportunities. Someone is asking for postdoc opportunities. There are funding opportunities at each level, PhD and postdoc included. And of course, as I said previously, Germany also is one of the key host countries for the EU funded Marie Curie fellowships or the European Research Council fellowships. And I'm sure that the DAD office will also help you in reaching out to potential uh, host institutions or supervisors across Germany. And uh, again, we will share the slides that you've just seen and they contain the links to all the key websites for you to follow up on the opportunities um, that you've been introduced. Now I'd like to turn attention to our uh, third speaker now. Thank you again, uh, Noem. Uh, and our third speaker is taking us to Belgium and uh, specifically to the Flemish research community. Now, Belgium, of course, they have various um, language communities, I think, French and Flemish, which is another word for Dutch. And we'll be hearing about the Dutch-speaking universities and the opportunities for you to link up with uh, Belgium. So Christoph Goosens is our final speaker for today, and I'd like to invite him to share his slides and his presentation. Christoph, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, I do. Yes, perfect. Okay. Yes, indeed. Uh, Belgium is quite a, a complicated country, but uh, that's also why, why I would like to keep my presentation very short. Uh, what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to concentrate on the scholarship opportunities specifically, which was asked 
uh, if I have to uh, start co explaining the, the cooperation between Belgium and Vietnam, it would take at least a day. Uh, last year, we just uh, celebrated our 45th uh, celebration uh, anniversary of cooperation between Vietnam and, and, uh, and Belgium. So there's a long history of cooperation and uh, I'm, I'm not going to detail here. Uh, you, you correctly uh, highlighted the fact that Belgium does uh, bring together uh, various languages, various uh, communities. There is the, the, the Flemish, the, the, the French speaking and the German speaking as well, also in the, in, in the east of the, of, the, of the country. So indeed it's true that I'm representing the Flemish part, but uh, I will also highlight uh, from our colleagues, because I also get uh, quite information from our colleagues, which is our, our sister organization, which is uh, ARES. So uh, if you see, um, as, you, as you can see there, this is, this is uh, Belgium. This is the, the, the map of Europe. So Belgium is this little point here. So you, you, you don't even see it on the world map, but still it's a very interesting country. It's like, it lies in the center of Europe. Brussels is the capital of, of Europe as well. So this is Brussels here. And then I'm representing Vlier US. Actually, that's an abbreviation, and it's the, the, the Flemish University Development Cooperation Program of Belgium. On the, on the south side, you have ARES, which is in the French speaking, and the, that's the Académie de Recherche et d'Enseignement Supérieur. So these are two uh, organizations that are specifically specialized and fully financed by the Belgian government, the, the, the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. And uh, here you, can, you have an overview. So there are 11 universities in total and some 32 university colleges that are uh, active in, in Belgium, that are based in Belgium. So as you can see here, these are these, are these different uh, universities. They are very highly qualified for such a small country. I must say I'm, I'm quite proud to say that. Uh, they are really in the top 50 of, uh, of uh, international universities. You can, it's, a, it's a whole broad range of different, uh, uh, different uh, trainings. So you have plenty of choice uh, to come and, and study in, uh, in uh, Belgium. So I will highlight specifically for, uh, I'm representing specifically then VRIOS, which is in Flanders, which counts five universities, again, top universities, as well as uh, 13 university colleges. Talking about Vietnam, as I said, Vietnam, crucial country for us uh, since, since, since the 80s. Actually, it was funny because uh, I talked to a, to a professor this morning and he said, this is the first time in his lifetime working with Vietnam. He could not travel to Vietnam due to COVID. Huh? So 2020 was kind of a weird. Uh, so he said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been working for th over 30 years in Vietnam. It's the first time I cannot travel. So he was quite, he was quite of sad saying this. But um, this is a, a, an overview of uh, the different uh, um, universities we're working with at the moment. Huh? Uh, with uh, with, uh, with uh, Vietnam, as you can see, there is this, this concentration in Hanoi and in uh, Ho Chi Minh. But of course, uh, as, as specifically for us, we are concentrating on the highlands, the central highlands of Vietnam. This is, a, this is our top, top priority of uh, area that we are working with in, in, uh, in uh, Vietnam. So what do we do? What, what, are the, what are the possibilities of working together with Belgium universities? There are two ways. There, is the, there are the projects and there are the, the individual scholarships. Eh? So what we do, we are, we are active in research, we are doing education, and then also this third pillar, service to society. Yeah? So universities are more than centers of research or education. They also have to fulfill this, uh, uh, this service to society in, 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 their, in their communities. Well, if we talk, so if we see, uh, so on, on, the, on the ground, actually, there is, there is the scholarships. So that's the re reinforcing the, in the individual. Then we have this departmental and faculty level cooperation. So then we are in at the level of uh, individual uh, projects. Then we have institutional strengthening and capacity building. These are the uni institutional university cooperation programs. We have two for the moment. There is one with uh, Huawei, you know, Huawei University and probably there will be one with uh, Kinyan University in the future. And then there is this national platform, uh, this uh, in cooperation between Vietnamese universities and uh, uh, Flanders universities. This is the, the network with the uh, Cantor University, which is specifically co concentrating on bioscience for food, eh, on food technology and aquaculture. So this is a, a short overview. So since, since uh, actually the early 2000 years of 2000, we um, already invested 17 million euros. This is only for Vier euros. So this is on the Flemish part. I can say it's about the same on the, on the French part. So Let's talk about, we're talking about about 35 million euros we've been investing in the past decade. 
Now, specifically now, concentrating on scholarships, which is a very important portfolio for us, of course. As I said, there are two possibilities. There are the individual scholarships and other scholarships embedded within projects. Huh? So if we, talk, if we have an overview here, so on the, for, for PhDs, we have about uh, 100, over 100 uh, since, again, the, the early 2000s, the year 2000s. Then we have short-term trainings, huh? about 400. Then we have the, the masters. Uh, so in total, we have about 800. Again, Flemish side, about the same on French side. I think it's even more on, on, on French speaking side. Now, talking about, um, talking about uh, scholarships again, there are two possibilities. So there are, there are the master programs and there are the training programs. These are all international programs. So it's all taught in English. Huh? They are, they, they are organized and for each of those programs, so in total there are about 15 master programs and about five training programs. And for each of, the, of those programs, we offer 12, 12 in total then 12 uh, scholarships. You should know that we, we have about 20 partner countries. In Asia, there's also, about, uh, apart from Vietnam, there's also Cambodia, there are the Philippines and there is Indonesia. So from that side, um, there is uh, plenty of uh, opportunities and here this is quite important so here you have a, a list I'm not gonna I'm, gonna I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna read all, all this so this is from the Flemish side this is what we offer from Flemish side so there are 15 uh, 15 master programs and there are uh, about five training programs at the moment at the moment as we speak there is an open call this is this is the this is the the, the website where you can go to there is an open call and you can apply for these programs as well as I said for 12 scholarships. So this is the moment now to, 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 get into, to get into action and to apply for one of those scholarships if you're interested of course in studying in one of those areas. This is again from Flemish side, from uh, Walloon side, from, from French speaking side. This is an overview from their program. So they have about 11 master programs and about the same amount, so also about uh, four, five training courses. On their side as well, there is an open call at the moment. So the submission deadline for ARES is 5th of February. This is, this is, the, this is the, the, the specific uh, website where you can go to. From our side, from the US side, the deadline is March. Depending, of course, on the specific course you want to follow because each, co each course is specifically organized by one of the universities. Remember, 11 universities, 32 university colleges. So each university is responsible for one of these courses. Sometimes they work together, but you, you really have to go specifically to the website, first of all, to this website, of course, but also to the website of the university. What is the eligibility criteria for those masters and those training? So for a devout master, you have to be 45 years old. For initial masters, you have to be 35 years old. Priority is given to candidates employed in academic institutions, but can also be research institutions. Also people from government, please be, 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 be welcome. Social economy, private sector, NGOs. Um, okay, you can also, if you are already working for one of the projects that we, are, that we are working with, in total, we have about 50 projects at this moment running with Vietnamese partners. So if you, are, if, if you are aware of a program that is running, then you should get, in, you, you just get informed and check whether there is the reason why you would like to apply for this separate scholarship type. There is only one scholarship per person, so you, can, you cannot apply for, for different masters. You really have to choose one specific course, one specific training. And uh, you, 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 cannot, you cannot apply twice. I mean, once you have had a scholarship, you cannot do it again. So that's, uh, that's uh, one of the, the rules, of course. The procedure, uh, eligibility criteria, first go to one of those, uh, of, of those websites. I invite you there. Uh, select the master programs, 15 from our site, 11 from the, from the colleagues from the, the, the Walloon universities. Visit the website also as well from the organizing university. Check whether you apply, whether, whether you're eligible to, to, to apply for a scholarship. Do not apply for more than one master program. That's obvious. The dates of application, as I said, can differ from one program to the other. So you really have to be very specific. You have plenty of time still. The, it will only open in January. So you still can prepare. 
uh, Vir US receives all the applications and then send it to the organizing universities. As I said, each university is organizing uh, these uh, these uh, these uh, uh, trainings. And then uh, Vir US then we will then contact you when you were uh, when you were uh, successful in applying. This is very short. This is very short. Uh, again, here you have our, uh, our websites. So please, I invite you to go to the website. There you will have plenty of information, detailed information. And if you want, I can, all, I can always uh, talk to you privately uh, using this specific uh, address, email address, and I will be happy to provide you with more information. That's it, that's it. That's all I have to say. If there are questions, please shoot. Yes, thank you so much, Christoph, if I, if I may. Um, this is always kind of the best kind of presentation, I think, very much straight to the point. We have uh, questions, of course, someone is asking specifically, are there any scholarship opportunities for the fields that are not listed in ICP? Not that I'm aware of. So, because what I didn't mention here is, of course, we have also the, the, the entire uh, possibilities with Erasmus, eh? Erasmus uh, scholarships. But this is specifically this is uh, this is discussed together with the the Belgian uh, the Belgian government, and these are the specific topics that we are offering scholarships for. So this is the only these are indeed the only uh, training in masters master trainings that you can apply for and that you can also get because you can you can always apply you know if you have if you have enough money, <laughs> you can always come over and you can always uh, get uh, get 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 uh, subscribed you know to one of those things. But for scholarships, this is the, these are the only, the only types of, uh, of cooperation. Meaning, these are scholarships specifically, separately, uh, from, from, uh, for, for, for the specific scholarship program. There, uh, there is also the possibility of getting a scholarship through a running project, as I said. And there are plenty of choices, you know, these are 50, 50 uh, projects running for the moment. So if you're really interested in some specific, uh, some, some specific area, I suggest you first check whether the home university, so the university that you are, that you are working with, that you're working with at home in Vietnam in this case, check whether you, there is already cooperation with Belgium. And if there's already cooperation with Belgium, check what, what projects are running and then you possibly you can apply for a scholarship within that specific area. Thank you so much. And once again, also thank you for your wonderful offer to um, consult interested participants after today's webinar. And once again, we will share Christoph's presentation slides, which will contain his contact details. So I think that was excellent advice. Obviously, Vietnamese re re uh, universities, research institutions uh, are very well connected to European institutions. And the International Relations Office, as it is usually called, would also be my first point of call to identify whether already some collaboration is um, in place, whether there's already a memorandum of understanding which would make it uh, easier for, for you to move around and to identify funding that's um, attached to that. Now, I wanted to, Christoph, thank you so much. I wanted to just share quickly my screen because I think there is something here that you would all benefit from exploring when you're uh, just digesting the information of all the presenters today. And I'd like to lead you to the Euraxis website because Euraxis is really a wonderful opportunity to learn more, not just about the three countries that we've heard about today, but about the other um, 40, 39 plus four, 39 um, European countries that are part of the European research area. Um, because each of them have their own national portal on our website. And I just quickly kind of click on Belgium here because that was our last presentation today. And you will lead, uh, this will lead you to the Euraxis Belgium website, which will have all kinds of information for you as an international researcher interested in spending some time in Belgium or working with Belgian partners on, for example, the jobs and funding opportunities, information and assistance on living in Belgium, working in Belgium. Um, what kind of protection do you have uh, in Belgium as a researcher that is employed there, for example? Uh, and again, just kind of general information about the Belgian research landscape, for example, 
or the types of universities or research um, institutions that you find across Belgium. And I just wanted to click here on jobs and funding because that is usually what people are most interested in. And here in Belgium alone, you have 298 offers that are open at the moment across various um, stages of career development. So this will be our PhD opportunities, postdoc opportunities and senior researcher opportunities and across, across all um, academic disciplines. So this again is an additional resource for you. So Euraxis, the Euraxis website, I go here to the homepage, the Euraxis website is really a treasure trove for you to take this further, to learn more about the jobs, the funding, the collaboration opportunities in 44 European countries. Some of them have been introduced to you today, others you may still want to explore. And here you have really everything at your fingertips that you will need to identify opportunities to take your research career to the next level. Now with this, I think I'll stop sharing and uh, I'd like to just thank all the panelists today for taking the time to share their expertise with us. Uh, maybe Jenny, I will hand over to you to close the session today. Yes, uh, thank you, Susanna. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody and, but of course, foremost, um, our panelists for today, um, uh, for Italy, for Belgium, and for Germany, for Spain. We will put up the presentation of Mr. Adrian Gutierrez on the website as we are running out of time, but please do check it out. We will uh, put it up uh, tonight so you can uh, you know, watch it at your leisure. There's a lot of information also that he is sharing. So, um, but at this point uh, to Ms. Ms. Tung, to uh, Dr. Marco Abiati, and of course to Christopher, thank you so much. And of course to you, Susan, and to all of you, please keep in touch with us. Um, please keep in touch with all of the social media channels and website of Euraxis ASEAN. And please do contact us and uh, let us know how we can help you. We are here to help you. Thank you so much and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.